So in this tutorial, we would like to show you how to import, register, and output the BLK to go data, also known as B2G data in Pinpoint. Examining the B2G data here, we can observe that we have carried out numerous tours. For training, we deconstructed the object, meaning we scanned the staircase, the ground floor, the upper floor, and the outdoor area, so that you can align the elements in pinpoint, registering them. And then we recorded the same tour again in its entirety, just to show that with the BLK2 Go, you can easily walk through such a tour in one go. This is not a big object here. The BLK2 Go is more focused on bigger areas because, of course, with the high speed, you also want to capture more. First, let's start our registration tool. Unfortunately, it's currently on the wrong screen. I'll bring this over here. And then we simply go ahead and create a new project. And I'll just save this in my Demo2 folder here. You can then download the data later. And I will refer to this as BLK2Go. And we will refer to it as REC for the purpose of registration. And then I save that. And then I simply go over to import. Like a V2G. I can select the staircase. By holding control, I can make multiple selections. I can choose tours here at the front using the selection or checkbox choices available on this page. We don't want to import the entire tour here, just the upper floor, ground floor, and the outdoor area. Click Open. Now we reach the Import Settings. The Import Settings are crucial and are actually easy and manageable, but I want to mention a few things about them. In this context, we have the colors. As you can visually perceive here, you are only able to perceive intensities, so these would be just the levels of grayscale. This is essentially the representation of the reflection behavior of the surfaces. This is always interesting when dealing with very dark areas. Then there is the quick import. The B2G data is imported in a way that the Leica API allows, or at least as it is done by default in the Register 360 software. And then in Pinpoint, there is the nice option. More effort is put into calculating cleaner panoramas, and the point cloud is colored in a more homogeneously manner. Of course, we choose nice. How else? That takes a bit more time. No need to wait in the tutorial. What's crucial is to try your first project with nice. Then you have, I think, a good idea of the quality. Here you can see the waypoints. Waypoints are essentially points, locations that are extracted. Virtual laser scanner locations. In the tutorial on capturing, I had mentioned to you that the BLK2GO always takes photos or creates half panoramas while being carried. Defined based on this path, imagine BLK2GO moving from here to there. This could be a distance of, let's say, 10 meters, Every 2.50 meters, extract a location, that is, a scan position, and create a panorama image and a location, which you can later jump on. I will show you this in detail shortly. So, then we proceed to the import, and the import process begins. This will really take longer, so please have some patience. It is very computationally intensive. I wouldn't wait for this now. I'll make a cut here and then get back to you directly with the imported project. Once the data is imported, it will appear here on the left side, and now we can start by maybe displaying the ground floor first. Therefore, we must load the scan. At this point, you are able to observe the imported individual scanner locations here, and you can also observe that we have imported a significant amount of data. Imported before. Probably not 2.50 M here now, but instead 50 centimeters or 1 M. Now, pay attention. Depending on the situation, these are the waypoints. So, initially, you walked with the BLK to go, and based on this path, the location is extracted. But that doesn't matter for the demo. I believe you understand the concept. Then I would like to highlight that once you have loaded the data, 
You have the option available at this point to choose a resolution level. That means you can also display the whole thing here in a higher resolution, of course. Then, naturally, the data needs to be reloaded, that is clear. However, you are able to view more details. You can essentially increase the entire thing at this location. For individuals who do not prefer these standard predefined configurations or who may desire to view more detailed choices, I would like to briefly highlight the expert mode at this location. You can click on registration up here, switch to expert mode, and then have the option to manually adjust the settings, meaning you could say here, I want to see a measurement point every 10 millimeters. Then you would need to click on update and the scans will be reloaded. Always a one-time process, so when you close and reopen the project, open all scans with a click, but this view is generated once, taking a moment. I will activate, you'll see scans disappear, and now scans reloading. So, scans loaded, and you can see they're not aligned. Now, it is possible to proceed and align the scans with each other using the given instructions. I wouldn't go into navigation now. There's a tutorial for basic navigation. Functioning of pinpoint. This implies that it should not be the current subject of discussion. How do you start with the registration? There is option one. You could set everything to move, could right click, could choose automatic alignment. But this is actually more for normal scan data like BLK360, RDC, etc., something along those lines. Let's extract that and shift our attention back to the details here once again. We previously stated that we had performed a scan of the staircase in order to establish a connection with all the other areas. So, this time I'll start by selecting and displaying only the staircase. Now we can see the staircase here, we can look at it from the top, and we have the option to navigate to the individual scan positions, just symbolically for now. Right click on the scan, then I jump into the scan here, and can navigate and move from location to location. But that's not what we're interested in right now. So, press the shift key and right click to zoom out. When I'm out here now, I can of course change the view. I switch to orthographic, then I have my top view here to get a basic orientation. Now we go to the second group. That's the ground floor. Next, we focus on the ground level. And we see, it's now placed here somehow and I can't move it yet. I need to activate the move function here, and then we see, okay, the staircase here is the exit. The staircase here is the exit down here, so I need to rotate it. Also, hold down the shift key, left mouse button, rotate once, move naturally with the mouse, then just the left mouse button, roughly position it, and then I would recommend using the right mouse button to go to the side navigation, so that I can make this height adjustment here. And then I note down here below an area where I have an overlap and make sure it's roughly through the point cloud, so this area here. Now I have about the level. I have it roughly aligned, and now I'm going up here. I'll exit this mode again, and I'm not saying very close now, but I'm saying it's just nearby. That means the first step is always to roughly approximate the point clouds and then start capturing scans. I am about to press this button at this moment. The registration process will commence, and it is expected to align the scans with each other in order to ensure proper synchronization. So that's done now. We could take a look at the statistics here, and then we'll see that it fits at around 9 millimeters. So that's already relatively good. We are just nearby. That means we will finalize it very precisely at the end. Done. Now we can proceed. Let's just say OK. We'll remove the motion here. Conceal that we only have the staircase. To maintain clarity, include the upper floor now. Turn on upper floor, move in, now we see, oh yes, it's totally crooked too. Just quickly move it aside and take a look, the staircase is down here, so again shift, left mouse button rotate. Then just use the left mouse button to roughly adjust the staircase, and use the right mouse button to navigate in height. 
and then somewhere within an area. So I believe it's somewhere around here in this particular area. Now, I would like to demonstrate to you one more technique. We have just observed that it is comparatively challenging to identify the floor in this location. You have the option to go and enable the back face culling, which will display the back sides of the scans at any time during the process. I go here to view back face culling. If I turn that off, then I see the surface. Black face culling means that if I have a surface and the scan was done here, then I only see the surfaces that the scan actually saw. When I see the surface from behind, it's invisible. When I disable it, the surface becomes visible, no matter the side I look at. And of course, this is useful here, because now I can search for a job here. Where I see both, and now you can see here the curve is approximately like this, and now we can do snap scans again, and of course, this upper floor scan is aligned towards the staircase, because that is fixed, and only the upper floor can move here. Let's go! With that, the process began, meaning we have second registration. Done. Can we quickly review the statistics here? Yes, 12 millimeters is acceptable. Again, this is just an approximate. Now we remove this, and finally, we take out the outdoor area. Put it into motion. There we also observe that it is entirely incorrect. Press and hold shift, then click the left mouse button to roughly position the cursor. Observe it from the side. Find an appropriate height because that already appears quite good. You can also observe the stair steps nearby, which indicates it does not have to be extremely precise at this moment. Trigger the scans once again to restart the process. And... Once he has finished his tasks here, then we will have our statistics available for review once again. Now, this looks less accurate. It's clear that it's less accurate because we have many interfering counters. There's a tutorial on filtering. You can filter everything, making registration more precise. I would leave that up for now because it goes beyond the scope of this tutorial. Now that we have our scans, let's deactivate everything and then display everything. Now we can see here, oh, that doesn't look so bad. We have our object here. Now is the finalization. This is the final step. It's often forgotten. That means I'll click move here. I'm saying my point cloud is calculated very close. That means we are now at 18, 12, 15, 20 millimeters here. And now I will start capturing scans. And now I allow all overlaps to be linked together. And I trigger the whole thing again. It'll take longer now, meaning more computation is needed. With that, we're almost done. When we look at the statistics now, we see that everything more or less fits. We have about 7 millimeters here. So that's a relatively good accuracy. That works for now. We could work with that. If you filter everything beforehand, you'll get even better outcomes. Filtering covered in separate tutorial. Please check Help Center, BLK2 Go Help Center, for more info. All right, then we can conceal the statistics. Presently, it is advisable to verify everything once more. And there are several options that I recommend. I would first suggest removing the movement. And would cut through the object with the supervision. Now, of course, we don't see much based on the many positions. That means we can hide them by pressing the P key, and then we have a floor plan here. And I have the capability to walk through this floor plan from the bottom to the top by holding down the Alt key and moving the mouse forward and backward while simultaneously pressing the right mouse button on my computer. And then I'll just take a look to see if the walls all somehow sensibly align with each other. Check here to see if it's clean, if I have any jumps. But those are wall protrusions. They are logical. They fit. You can see here nicely how crooked the walls are. So, it's a great thing to scan this object. And now we are here on the upper floor, and as you can see, everything looks good. 
entering the slanting ceiling, then it ends as that's where the ceiling starts. Looks good. I'd be happy with that. It means I could already spend money here. So, before we get to spending, I'd like to touch on at least two or three points. These are separate tutorials. Too much to cover here, but vital for you to know. One aspect here would be clipping, meaning you have the option to cut things out. For instance, you can cut out specific areas in this place. Then you have cleanups in the spot, that is to say. By clicking on the plus sign in this location, you will be provided with the option to perform a cleanup on point clouds. I'll do this symbolically. I'll just take a lasso. Draw this around outside, for example around my building. On double click, polygon closes, point cloud is selected, typically trim outer area to remove it from the selection. I can reverse this and erase it. That way, I would have the choice to delete it quickly. There is a reception vol, there is cutting behind a plane, there is selecting reference points within an object, and there is reference points through windows and mirrors, etc. Could delete this. I'll press escape, then exit. Cleanup will be visible here too. You can also hide that again. Then everything will be visible again. For the time being, I will leave it on since usually you would produce an output of a cleaned object from it. So, what else do we have? Then you have group capture here. Group capture is when you have multiple scans within an overview map. So you have imported all scans here. You could create an overview map and label it as a new group, for example, outdoor. And inside. And then you could go here and say, these are the interior areas. I can either cut and paste them here or drag them directly in here. Then we have the outdoor area here, but I'll move it outside. If we want to align the items, for example, we could activate all of them here and then keep them close and now say group. So the position of the scans among each other will not be adjusted because it is considered as a group. So the entire group will be moved. And that's another way of structuring that makes sense. You can also create different levels of groups here so that an object can be logically structured very well. Then there is one more thing to mention about the coordinates. So you can see here, if I disable moving and press the coordinates button, nothing happens. This usually leads to surprise, but it's somehow logical. If you activate that, then the scans must be movable. It is not possible to adjust the coordinates or orientation when the scans are fixed. This signifies that if I activate this and click on the coordinate button, I have the opportunity to enable a mode of operation for leveling the scans. So I can define the orientation here, I can align the X and Y axis here. I possess the capability to make adjustments to the origin and align or transform my scans in order to match georeferenced coordinates or local coordinates, thereby ensuring precise positioning and alignment of the data obtained from the scans. Perhaps that that is also a separate tutorial. And then we actually move on to the output. This means we can work with E57 here, provide recap for all Autodesk users, and of course, switch to the pinpoint model to, for example, model the data. Perhaps here in note, there is something hidden here, a menu where unstructured point cloud data can be output. This will certainly need to be harmonized in the future. I want to show you this because here we can really reduce it further. Also unstructured means I reduce pump work again and can specify a thinning factor so I don't have as much data later in my processing. Yes, then I would hand over the whole thing here. So, and finally, we will hand over the whole thing to pinpoint, to the model module, to start the evaluation. and maybe a concise note providing a brief overview of each available option for consideration. Here we have cleanup, which means if there are multiple cleanups, you can activate them. 
Here we have the resolution, which represents points, indicating the number of points to be displayed in the modeler. Here you can also raise the value for higher detail, but it takes longer. One should always consider that it increases exponentially. I believe using the default value here is sensible. Then we have the file accuracy. I would also leave that on high. There is also a custom setting where you can essentially still adjust it here in this specific location. It would be too extensive to explain now. There is also a tutorial for that. Then we have stationary scans and merged point clouds. Since we have the location information here, I would also choose stationary scans, similar to BLK and RDC, or even point clouds from other scanners. And then we proceed to click OK at this specific juncture and save the entirety of the thing once again. I've had this. I'll name it Reg2 now, then click Save, and the import process will begin. And then I would briefly reopen the project in the modeler so you can see what the result looks like. As usual, we have our view of the modeler. Here we have the color shading again, which represents the different levels. They are automatically extracted, and that was also a bit the setting earlier with the accuracy. And then maybe we can just go into a room here, and we can see that we have now made quite a few scans or extracted many locations. As I said, that's what we determine. Let's switch to the normal true color display, F3, and then we see, yes, that actually looks quite good. You can already work efficiently with that. And considering the rapid scanning of the entire thing at this moment, you can see someone walked through the room here. More shots taken towards the window to capture that. And then one can proceed to state that point projection could then cut through this particular area. For instance, to extract the two-dimensional points or the two-dimensional line once more. I will make it brief, okay? That can be done quickly. Then we have a floor plan here, which could be output as a DXF file. Alternatively, one could start modeling by simply moving over the surface, defining the ground area, and then switch to the region highlight mode for modeling. Now we've fixed the floor here, we hold it steady, and then we just go around in the usual pattern. Familiar with this from other tutorials. Must not click door. Important to take ledge at the back. Here we have the corner, the final corner, then we connect the polygon, and we can quickly extract it. Now we'll extrude, go up to the ceiling, ignore the protrusion, create the sloped roof, and have our first room. I'll press the space bar to select, then press V, and there we have it. Our first 3D model is now complete. Then you can work with that. I can now review this, check surfaces, determine volume of this space. Yes, now in pinpoint model. I think no need to proceed. Yes, that was the teaser or anteaser. BLK to go data, B2G data into the pinpoint registration tool. Register, optimize, clean up, possibly add coordinates, and then export either to recap, to E57, unstructured output, or directly to pinpoint model for immediate use. If you liked it, thumbs up, subscribe to channel so you don't miss any future updates, and yes, have fun with BLK2Go. And the last hint maybe, on the bottom right you can see on our website on the bottom right. When you look at the website, you can see our bot. Ask him a few questions about BLK2Go that come to mind. We train our colleagues daily, our virtual one, and he gets better. I think one will be amazed in the weeks to come by what will happen. Thanks a lot, and until next time, goodbye.